The, um, well, the answer is I do believe in dividends in, in a great many situations, including many of the ones that companies in which we own stock. The test about whether to pay dividends is whether you can con continue to create more than one dollar of value for every dollar you retain. And there are many business. We take C's Candy, which we own. C's Candy has paid everything virtually out to us that they've earned because they do not have the ability within C's Candy to use large sums, which they earn, uh, intelligently in their business. So it'd be an enormous mistake for C's Candy to retain money. So they distributed Berkshire, and we hope that we move that around in some other area where that dollar becomes worth a dollar ten cents or a dollar twenty cents in terms of present value terms. If we do that, the shareholder, whether they're taxable or whether they're not taxable, whether they're a foundation or whether they're living on income even, they are better off if if we retain the money. Because if in, if they were going to get a dollar in dividends and it became worth a dollar ten or a dollar twenty in market value immediately on a present value basis, uh, they're better off selling a small percentage of their stock and, and realizing uh, the required amount that way, and they will have more money when they get all through doing that than if we paid it in dividends. But if the time comes, uh, and it will come someday, when the, if the time comes when we don't think we can use the money effectively to create more than a dollar of market value per dollar retained, uh, then it should be paid out. And like I say, we do that individually within Berkshire, but because we have this ability to redistribute money uh, in a tax efficient way within the company, uh, we probably had more, we had more reason to retain all of our earnings. If, if C's Candy were a standalone company, we would simply pay out a lot of the, the earnings, practically all of the earnings and dividends, just like we do now, except it goes to Berkshire. It, we like our we like the companies in which we have investments to pay to us the money they can't use efficiently in their own business. In some cases, that's 100% of what they earn. In some cases, it's 0% of the earn. We own some stocks that don't pay any dividends. Big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to, to do it in a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. I mean, you've really got to, you got to grab them when they come. Because they, you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it. And every big financial, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You'd get very rich because you'd think through very hard each one. I mean, you went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company you didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. There's a temptation to dabble, if, uh, particularly during bull markets. In uh, uh, stocks, it's so easy. You know, it's easier now than ever because you can do it online. You know, just you click it in and maybe it goes up a point and you get excited about that and you buy another one the next day and so on. You can't make any money over time doing that. But if you had a punch card with only 20 punches, you weren't gonna get another one the rest of your life, you would think a long time before every investment decision. And you would make good ones and you'd make big ones. And you probably wouldn't even use all 20 punches at the, in your lifetime, but you wouldn't need to. Hi, my name's Charlie Rice and I'm a stockholder from St. Louis, Missouri. Appreciate hearing your comments on publicly held companies using their cash for uh, dividends versus stock buybacks? Well, we, the equation is pretty simple, but the practice doesn't necessarily follow logic. The, it's obviously, as long as you're telling the truth to your shareholders about what's going on so that you aren't manipulating the stock downward or something, when a stock can be bought well below its business value, uh, that probably is the best use of cash. It's something the Washington Post did on a huge scale back in the 1970s. Teledyne may have bought 90% or something or close to it of their stock back. And that was the reason mo a, a very significant percentage of companies bought stock back in the past because they actually thought it was selling for less than it was worth. Uh, like I say, that that can be abused if you do various things to bury your stock in one way or another, but, but that wasn't the usual case. Uh, 
stock repurchases were relatively unpopular in those days. They've become quite popular now, and 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 to the extent that I've been around a good number of them and and been able to pick up on what I thought was the underlying rationale, if not the professed rationale, you know, I think it's often done for people that that are hoping that it causes their their stock price not to go down, and uh, and they're and and often done at prices that don't really make a lot of sense for continuing shareholders. Um, if we wanted to return a bunch of cash to shareholders, we would, if our stock was undervalued, we would, we would, uh, we would go to the shareholders and say, we think it's cheap and, and we think that this cash can be better used by you than by us. And we will therefore have, be repurchasing at what we think is a discount intrinsic value. And the people that remain will be better off and the people that get out will get out at a little bit better price than they would otherwise. Um, in terms of, dividends, you get into an expectational situation. And for most companies that follow a, that pay a cash dividend, it doesn't make sense to be, to bounce around the dividend from year to year. Although private companies frequently do that. And we do it ourselves with our subsidiaries. They, some, some subsidiary can pay us a lot of money one year and not so much money the next year. Uh, but with public companies, people do, a lot of people do buy stocks to obtain dividends and they hope for regularity and that there's a signaling aspect to it and everything. So I would, I would say that once you establish a dividend policy with a public company, you should think a long time before you change that policy in a material way. But I think the best use of cash, if you don't have a good use for it in the business, if the stock is underpriced is to repurchase it. And if it's overpriced, you got no business buying in a single share, but, uh, a lot of companies do it, Charlie. Yeah, the, the dividends are a very interesting subject. If you count the unnecessary stock trading and the cost of investment advice and the cost of making a lot of errors and the trading costs in and out, I don't think it would be too extreme to say that now the total amount that's paid out in dividends is roughly equal to the amount that is wasted in all this trading and investment advice. So that the net dividends that come to the shareholders are approximately zero. This is a very peculiar way to run a, re a republic and very few people comment about it. Yeah, actually I did in an article <laughs> some time ago in Fortune, I did the frictional costs to American shareholders in sort of changing shares uh, for all American business as a whole, those frictional costs are probably not much different than the entire amount paid out by American corporations. So, uh, but getting to the individual corporation level, a company that expects to regularly earn more than it than it can profitably employ in its business should be paying out dividends. Take a subsidiary of ours like Seize Candy. We would love to expand Seize Candy to double or triple its present size, but it doesn't work. We've tried it a lot of different ways. So it should be paying out its earnings. If it was a public company, and it was at one time, you know, you could argue that something approaching a 100% payout would, would make sense there. But most management's worrying about earnings falling off at some time in the future would rather establish a, a lower level and, 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 and therefore ensure regularity of dividends uh, by, by going with it with a conservative level uh i uh, you know we it's obviously something we think about at berkshire when we have 30 odd billion dollars around if we can't figure out a way to employ that over time you know it's it's a mistake to keep it in corporate form but we have this expectation and i think it's a reasonable expectation that we get to put it to work if we ever came to the different conclusion if our stock we thought our stock was significantly undervalued, we'd probably figure in terms of dispersing it through repurchases, particularly where now dividends and capital gains are are neutral for, for individuals. Uh, and um, if our stock was not underpriced and we fell, we we would we would probably do something by a dividend. It's not gonna happen soon, however. <laughs>